um, let me start with the introduction of our speakers. Uh, Yulia Kurychuk is a certified Okta implementation manager from CloudFresh. Her expertise lies within data-driven solutions, business security, and identity access services. Today, Yulia will cover part about Zero Trust Framework and recent cybersecurity regulations. Also today, we gladly welcome Arkadiusz Krovczynski. Arkadiusz is a senior solution engineer at Okta with more than 20 years of IT experience. On a daily basis, he cooperates with different cross-functional teams to solve their security challenges. Sorry for that. And uh, Arkadiusz today will showcase Okta solutions, demonstrating how they uh, solve uh, the most crucial security and compliance challenges of um, uh, enterprises. I will also take just a brief moment to uh, introduce you to CloudFresh. We are a trusted partner of world leading cloud solutions such as Google Cloud, Zendesk, Asana, GitLab, Okta, and Microsoft. We specialize in custom implementation of those solutions, ensuring first hand experience and ongoing support to unlock their full potential. And we are proud to work with leaders in various industries. Some of our clients you can see now on this slide. And we prepared something special for you. Uh, we are offering 10% um, discount for all Okta products. To use the offer, just scan the QR code, um, fill out the quick form, and our team will be in touch right after the webinar. I will also send the link to the chat so you won't lose it. Uh, and just before we jump into the main part, there is one more special thing uh, we prepared. Um, we are offering uh, the special branded gifts for uh, the person who asks the most interesting question or uh, will be active in the chat. Um, there will be also a live assessment, uh, so it also counts. We will choose a winner at the end of the webinar. So I wish you good luck and passing my word to Yulia. Uh, hi everyone. So today we will discuss zero trust and its importance in the modern digital landscape. I will be appreciate for your comments and your question. Uh, so be active and uh, find some prizes. So let's start. Uh, to begin, let's establish a foundation with a few definition of uh, zero trust. My preferred definition is uh, zero trust is the name for an approach to IT security and assumes there is no trusted network perimeter and that every network transaction must be authenticated before it can transpire. Uh, so uh, let's uh, find on this slide uh, explanation of the traditional security perimeter. Traditional IT network security is based on the castle and mod concept. With castle and mod security, a firewall, for example, makes it difficult to gain access from outside the network. But everyone inside the network is trusted by default. The problem with this approach is that once an attacker gains access to the network, they have free reign over everything within it. Essentially, if a hacker can break a mod, they have access to all the data inside. It's quite a problem. So, on this slide, you can clearly visualize the traditional perimeter. When a hacker obtains credential, they gain access to the entire company network. I often hear employees mention that using MFA or behavioral checks takes more time. However, imagine if someone just obtained your credential and stole company data. This highlights the importance of transitioning to zero trust. So, and here we can uh, uh, see the new zero trust perimeter. No user or device can be trusted by default. Instead, all access to resources must be verified and authorized. This approach ensures that every user and device is authenticated before accessing any part uh, of the network. 
uh, so significantly uh, security by preventing unauthorized access and protecting our valuable data. So here we're using a uh, behavioral check, we're using an MVA and uh, check all steps of our user and we don't have any trusted perimeter. So um, you might ask, uh, what has changed? Our company, like in 20 years, just working with old scheme and uh, everything was right, but um, our world is changing so fast now. Uh, and uh, why were the old method uh, sufficient before? Uh, we are experienced a rapid shift toward digitalization with significant changes such as um, adoption of cloud technologies and the rise of uh, remote work. On the slide, you can see a few examples illustrating this transformation. In today, uh, volatile fault of cyber conflict, NIS2 has advanced trust but verified to the next level, zero trust. Mm -hmm. This approach is essential for securing data at the system and critical infrastructure. It is vital for the national and homeland security of European nation against all kinds of uh, hostile hacking attack. So here we can find a uh, numbers about changing in our century. So now now we can find that information that more than 90 percent of organization using a cloud now so uh everyone can uh accept to cloud from uh, own the de device for example from home and here we can we can't uh, just uh, check everything so here zero trust is just one way and uh I really love that uh, topic. Uh, it's called Never Waste a Good Crisis. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the better options, the better best application is a world uh, based on crisis, on problem, on big uh, attacks. And on that slide, you can find some information about uh, damaging attacks. So, uh, by learning from this incident, we can transform uh, adversity into a catalyst for growth and relicence. And uh, here we can find information about MERSC uh, IT infrastructure attack. Uh, so the company was uh, damaged a lot in two years. Uh, Norsk Hydro system were rendered uh, the company revenues team uh, for weeks. Uh, my uh, lovely example, actually, it's a Sony in 2014, because company lost more than $15 million just uh, to uh, just um, $15 million and damage Sony's reputation. It showed uh, us the critical needs for strong cybersecurity measures. The Sony hack reminds us that no, organi no organization is safe from cyber threats and highlights the importance of constantly updating and improving our security. So here can be not only in business loss, but companies must also regain the trust of customers that make questions, their ability to protect sensitive information. That work is not done quickly and in some cases could take, take years. And here let's check some numbers about uh, zero trust uh, reported benefits. So for we uh, have a number that 75% uh, reported improved risk management and 65% reported improved security remote access, and 41% remote uh, a reduced number of IT uh, security incident, and 34% reported reduced network complexity, and 26% uh, report lower overall security cost. 
Um, actually, a pretty good number, isn't it? So uh, here we are understanding that uh, when we just architect and zero trust, our company can gain a lot of uh, benefits and reduce uh, cybersecurity risk. So let's talk uh, about zero trust uh, pillars. Uh, here are more details. So it's a base and foundation of uh, zero trust. It's in visibility and analytics, uh, automation and orchestration. It's quite important because when you started to develop your application or develop your cybersecurity, uh architect in your company it's quite important uh make it from uh start uh here uh, we can uh find information also about uh pillars like and uh, users and identity actually we can cover that step with an octa because using octa we can uh manage users and identity we can lock all information also we can uh manage um access uh, to all our application uh, next one is uh, devices uh, so uh, it's called on question uh where and uh, using uh, and uh, devices man management, we can manage uh, assess from uh, any device and also we can use the higher uh, policy to uh, track our devices in assess. Uh, next one is a network and security. Uh, so we can divide actually network in security for for different steps it's a data flow mapping it's a micro segmentation uh, for example uh, it's a software defined perimeter and of course it's encryption of uh, network uh, next one it's an uh, application and workloads uh, we also can cover uh, that pillar with an uh, octa uh, so and uh, we can divide uh, that step on a uh, next one like an application inventory uh, used to identify authorized and after not uh, an uh, unauthorized shadow IT secure software development continuous monitoring and uh, ongoing authorization and workload isolation and uh, next one is data pillars so data pillar divide on data classification data encryption and data loss protection and also data access control uh, okay. Uh, has possibility to uh, manage data using Active Directory or Universal Directory, so we can cover that pillars with Okta too. And let's talk about uh, foundation uh, components uh, a little bit. Uh, firstly, it's in visibility and analytics. Uh, so here we have to lock all our traffic and also. Um, provide and continuous monitoring and trace intelligent and for sure it's security information and you know, event management so here we used to collect and analyze data and logs from disparate data sources so uh, and the second foundation uh, component is an automation and orchestration uh, for me, it's main one because uh, using an automation, we can be sure uh, about our security and we can uh, provide security and um, set up our security policies on all steps on uh, SDLS. So, uh, providing and automation penetration tested, uh, testing or uh, creating automation uh, security checks, uh, we can be sure that our company uh, really secure. 
Uh, so automation and orchestration we can divide on machine learning and artificial intelligence and security orchestration, automation and response. Also, it's a policy uh, decision point, orchestration, security operation center and incident response uh, integration. Uh, so uh, let's bring it all together. Uh, so here we can find a scheme with all um, zero trust pillars and uh, dividing. Uh, we will share presentation after uh, uh, our webinar. So it's pretty useful slide to understand the zero trust architect. So, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, everyone just heard before trust, uh, like and trust, but verify. It's uh, really popular in my country. Um, but uh, today we will talk about next level. It's a never trust, always verify, and uh, a little bit about regulation. So. Uh, now we will uh, explore uh, never trust, always verify, um, which goes beyond trust but verify. Uh, in our complex digital world, like I said before, traditional secure uh, are no longer enough. Uh, the never trust, always verify approach means that no user or device should be trusted by default whether inside or outside the network. Every access request must be verified, authenticated, and authorized. This change is crucial for uh, meeting modern regulation and protecting sex-sensitive da data from advanced cyber threats. By adopting this uh, strict security model, we ensure our organization stays uh, silent and secure meets regulatory requirements and protect our digital assets in an era where trust must be constantly earned. So, uh, as let's talk a little bit about uh, NIS. Its acronym stands by Network and Information System. It refers in the EU directive on the security of network and um, information system, which aims to enhance cybersecurity across uh, European Union. The original uh, NIS directive was adopted in uh, 2016, and NIS second is its updated version. Introduce, introduced. Um, to address the uh, evolving cybersecurity risk landscape and uh, to strengthen uh, collaboration among EU member states. So, uh, what's uh, changed and what's new in uh, this second? Uh, this uh, second now covers small sectors like uh, healthcare, public administration, waste management, postal service, and digital services. This means uh, more industries are protected from cyber threats. Uh, second one, it's more entities. Uh, the directive now uh, includes more types of organization extending its protection to a broader range. Uh, also, uh, here we have a new um, methods of selection and registration. Uh, new second introduce better ways to select and register entities makes the process more efficient. Uh, also new incident notification deadlines. New second has stricter deadlines. Significant incident must be reported within 24 hours of detection. Uh, and uh, a detailed report must be provided within 72 hours, as it ensures quicker responses to cyber incident. And a little bit about extra requirements. Uh, this second adds more rules uh, for compliance, like better risk management, regular audits, and continuous monitoring, improving cyber security standards. 
Uh, actually, these updates make uh, new seconds stronger and more effective in uh, protecting our digital uh, world and other countries, of course. So, pillars again. Let's talk about three main pillars of uh, new second. Uh, here we are mostly talking about uh, company sites. So uh, most of us are uh, most interested in uh, company responsibilities, uh, which and then risk management. So for uh, member states' responsibility, in a second gives more duties to EU member states. They must set up authorities to handle cybersecurity, create incident response team, and keep national cybersecurity strategies up to date. This helps build a strong and coordinated cybersecurity framework across Europe. Uh, we already have a precedence and uh, can uh, learn from it. Uh, let's talk about risk management. Uh, so, for any second, requires organization to have better risk management. They must uh, put in place strong security measures, do a regular risk assessment, and uh, continuously monitor their system. Uh, this proactive approach helps prevent and reduce cyber threats. And about cooperation and information. So, this second uh, stresses the importance of working together and sharing information. Member states and organizations should exchange cyber threats information and best practices. This cooperation is crucial for responding uh, effectively to cyber incidents. Uh, there are three pillars of this second aim to improve cybersecurity uh, across the uh, European Union, uh, making the digital environment safer for everyone. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, talk a little bit uh, then uh, key measures of uh, new second firstly it's an a risk analysis and uh, man management so conduct a regular risk assessment to identify analyze and uh, mitigate potential cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities uh, second one is an incident handling uh, here uh, we establish and uh, maintain effective process for um, detecting, managing, uh, managing and responding uh, to cybersecurity incidents, including a clear incident response plan. Uh, next one is business uh, continuously and crisis, uh, crisis management. Uh, it's mean implement strategies for business continuity, disaster recovery, and crisis management to maintain operation during and after a cybersecurity incident. Uh, next one is supply chain security. Uh, actually, it's really popular to hacking uh, by this way. So uh, here we assess and ensure the security of third party providers and supply chain partners, uh, incorporating security requirements into contract and monitoring compliance. Uh, next one, it's in security policies and procedures. Uh, on that, uh, Okay, we develop and enforce uh, comprehensive security policies and procedures tailored to the organization's need, covering all aspects of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, assess, control, and identify management. Implement strong assess controls and identify management practices to ensure that only authorized individuals have access to critical system and data. Uh, assess management, of course. Uh, it's uh, maintain an inventory of information assets and regularly update it to ensure all assets are counted um, for and uh, protected. Uh, security awareness and training uh, provide regular cybersecurity awareness training and education for employees to ensure they understand and can 
uh, respond to security threats. It's quite important because uh, mostly just regular people like a um, travel manager in company or secretary can um, don't understand uh, why they uh, have to use MFA and uh, zero trust uh, policy. It can be uh, I need more time so uh, here it's quite important to provide training to understanding uh, our employees why we need that uh, network and information system security so deploying technical measures to protect network and information systems such as firewall uh, intrusion detection system and encryption of course uh, and last but not least it's monitoring auditing and testing continuously monitor system for security uh breach conduct uh, regular security audits and perform uh, penetration testing to identify and address vulnerabilities uh so uh here are a few recommends uh to uh action plan for NIS second compliance uh i would like to outline the case steps in our recommended action plan for this second uh, firstly uh we have to uh, uh we have to determine uh, if you are affected by this second uh so uh next uh, um inform your top management about a new second sanction and fines to empathize and the importance of uh, compliance. Uh, then provide trainings to top managers of cybersecurity risk management to ensure they understand the risk and necessary measures. Uh, allocate the necessary budget to meet new second requirements. Uh, next, uh, step is examine the 10 cybersecurity risk management uh, measures mounted by NIST second and ensure they are implemented uh so if, um this information from previous slide uh next one improve your incident reporting uh, process to meet the directive requirements uh evaluate the security of your supply chain uh, to ensure it means uh, new second standards uh, develop a robust business continuously and crisis management plan mm -hmm. uh, and uh, establish mm -hmm. an information security management system that aligns with new second uh, next is establish uh mm -hmm. Next one is promote security development practices within your organization and set up a vulnerability disclosure policy, create a policy for disclosing and managing uh, vulnerabilities. And the last uh, regularly test and audit your security measures to ensure they are effective. So this means and penetration test that it means just test by uh, these two requirements because sometimes something change. And uh, here we have to understand that uh, vulnerability is growing every time when we improving our system. So we have to check uh, everything and just grow up our security. So by following these steps, uh, we can ensure our organization is compliant with this second and better prepared to uh, handle cybersecurity challenges. Uh, so, uh, on the next slide, we explore the concept of uh, zero trust a strategy where each organization journey will be unique. Uh, no two uh, organizations are the same and their paths uh, to implementing zero trust will be different uh, based on several, uh, several factors. So, um, 
sometimes uh, company just asking uh, some uh, manual to implement in zero trust but it's just impossible because we can't find two uh, same companies it depends on size company larger organization may have more complex needs uh, compared to smaller ones it depends on missions. The core missions of the organization will shape uh, its security uh, prioritize. Um, it also depends uh, of budget because available um, funding will uh, influence how uh, extensively your trust can be implemented. Uh, uh, it depends on resources, uh, the skills and tools at uh, hand will determine uh, the approach to uh, zero trust. Uh uh also uh, about uh, risk environment different industries face varying levels of cyber threats uh, regulatory requirements compliance need will vary by sector and region it architects the existing it uh, infrastructure will uh, decide specific zero trust strategies and uh, cybersecurity capabilities, the current state of an organization's cybersecurity will guide the uh, zero trust journey. So there is no single right way to implement zero trust. Each organization should adopt the aspects of zero trust that make the most sense to their specific needs and uh, by tailoring the zero trust approach to fit your unique situation, uh, you can effectively enhance your cybersecurity posture. Okay. So, um, when you started to design your zero trust uh, architect, uh, here we uh, have to have the four uh, key design principle of zero trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, firstly, for sure, we have to focus on business outcomes. Uh, security should align with and support business goals. Uh, then the secure critical assess uh, first, then extend outwards. Uh, then uh, we uh, have to think about and define and control assess to sensitive data and uh, then we uh, have to inspect and log all traffic monitor and log all network activity for real time through detection so actually by following this principle we can build a strong zero trust security framework that protect uh, our organization and supports uh, our business uh, objective and uh, Actually, uh, in the world, we have a few uh, different uh, zero trust uh, designed uh, methodologies, but uh, here I prepared uh, two of them just on standard. And uh, uh, I love uh, Forrester one because uh, they provide the really clear information about uh, uh, methodology and all steps. Uh, so, firstly, uh, we have to define uh, the perfect surface or identify uh, our sensitive uh, data based on Forrester. Uh, then, map transaction flow and um, map the flows of sensitive data by Forrester. So, it's pretty simple and it's mean uh, similar things. Uh, but uh, here we can uh, find uh, just a unique uh, design methodology that suit our company. Uh, then uh, we design or architect zero trust um, architect and uh, then create uh, policies. It can be behavior, it can be assess policies. Uh, by Forrester, it's on short step. On first step, we continuously monitor uh, our zero trust ecosystem. And the last one is a monitor and maintain and about uh, Forrester in embrace security automation and orchestration. Uh, so uh, for me, Forrester uh, uh, one is more uh, full and uh, clear because we have uh, like a clear information here and uh, a lot uh, information um, 
to just um, implement and zero trust uh, is the best way. So, um, and a really interesting situation on the market now, because, uh, for example, just for uh, one year, we can uh, see how uh, increased the number of zero trust uh, implemented company. In recent years, more and more companies have started using the zero trust security model. In 21, it was 24% of companies had implemented zero trust. By 22, this number increased significantly to 55%. This shows that more businesses understand the importance of strong cybersecurity and more organization use this um, model we are creating a safer and more security uh, digital environment and uh so it's interesting is your company part uh, of that 55 percent isn't it uh, what level of security do your company have? Let's find out uh, with a live assessment. Uh, please scan the QR code uh, or find the link in the comments to complete uh, a quick form. Once you have finished, we will discuss the result uh, together and we will talk a little bit more about levels of um, zero trust uh, implement. Thanks, Yulia. Um, everyone, uh, we encourage you to take part in the assessment. Um, and meanwhile, we, we will dedicate a couple of minutes for those who uh, want to participate. Um, let's cover, we have only one question for now from Ivan. Uh, is, it is uh, if we can measure the effectiveness of the zero trust implementation in real time. Uh i'm not sure it's possible in real time because like we said uh, we have discussed uh, before uh, implementation of zero trust uh, depends of company unique uh, so it will depends of industry of company size etc etc and um, i'm fully uh, recommend to just have uh, uh, as a meeting with us and we can uh, provide uh, and uh, measure the effectiveness based on your company for example because in different company it's absolutely different implementation process and benefit process because you can be uh, some um, uh, really sensitive uh, industry uh, like an uh, post business or something like that or it can be uh, just a shop or um, retail uh, company. So it's quite a different risk. We have um, uh, to understand uh, that um, unique on every, uh, all companies here. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Um, Ivan, let us know if uh, we answer it or just raise a hand um and we can we can give you a mic um to uh, ask additional details okay thanks uh, for the feedback as well uh, i suggest uh, moving on uh, so um we we already a little bit behind the schedule so let's uh, let's proceed to, to uh the results of the assessment um anyone who is still in process you will get a score uh, once you submit a form it's a really quick form uh and uh, now you will cover and also I will share in the chat um, how many scores means uh, what, what stage of the zero trust. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have a uh, four stage, it's a uh, basic, automated, intelligent and uh, pervasive. And it's really interesting to see uh, on what stage uh, you are uh and um, also irena 
provide information in comments. Uh, here we uh, understand that below five points, it's a zero stage, and from five to eight, it's a first stage, from eight to 13, uh, second, and above 13, you are really master in cybersecurity. So uh, let's uh, uh, run. Uh, so uh, here we have a few tips for a successful zero trust journey. It's an uh, form a dedicated zero trust team, and uh, here we have like an uh, no best practice because it's really individual for all company. So here you can uh, find uh, that uh, tips, and we will share it of, uh, after our webinar. So. Arkadiusz, stage all yours. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Julia, for the insights and uh, all the great slides and the discussion. So it must be a really ton of work that you put into it. So uh, maybe one sentence uh, before I would say jump into, into the Octo overview and uh, into quick demos. If we or if I personally am really talking with customers about a hey, uh, about zero trust, what is your strategy? What is your security looking like? So I'm using, I would say, the magic sentence that zero trust, uh, as you already mentioned, it's it's not a product or a solution that you can, I would say, just can take and install it somewhere because it's not possible. It's 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 like you mentioned, it's a strategy for implementing really cybersecurity in a business world uh, without parameters. So uh, just just wanted to, I would say, sum this up and yeah, maybe uh, next slide. Um, so first of all, maybe a quick, uh, quick wrap, uh, wrap up. So when we are talking about Okta and, and, and our solutions, so today we are focused on the workforce identity cloud you see here, and, uh, the, the slide will be attached in the presentation. Uh, we are talking about real converged platform. Yeah. You see here that our platform here has a 99.99% uptime. So this is really guaranteed. So. We are born in the cloud, so we're a pure, pure SaaS solution. Uh, for sure, we are integrating also hybrid and on-premise resources, but we, we, as mentioned, we are born in the cloud. So we are able to manage different kinds of directories. Doesn't matter if you're running AD, uh, LDAP, uh, or, 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 or what else, I would say your infrastructure is looking like. So we call it from Okta side, anything as a source, and um, we, can, we can bring, I would say, nearly everything together. Insights and reporting, it's uh, as, as Yula mentioned, so really powerful. You can, I would say, uh, review and extract all the data uh, that is coming together into our platform. An important topic also the extensibility. So for sure, we have a lot of built in. Yeah, you will see it also in the in the Okta admin dashboard demo. But uh, our really powerful APIs give you, I would say, the options and the possibility to automate. I would say your process, your infrastructure um, with API codes. So you are really flexible if you are a fan of uh, of, of the interface uh, or if you are a fan of a pure API. Risk signals here uh, on the right side, um, we are, I would say, partnering with a lot of, I would say, security vendors to take to risk signals from them and then decide, hey, which actions do we want to, I would say, execute? Do we really want to allow this guy or this device to connect to Okta. So a lot of a lot of possibilities here. And in the middle, it's all about access management. So uh, single sign on multi-factor authentication from any resource, any device, and for sure uh, from, from everywhere, because in a, in, in a modern world, you need to, I would say, connect from anywhere. Um, in the middle, the identity governance. So giving giving the folks the right access they need to on time so we are talking about burst right access about day zero onboarding so all this is possible with okta and last but not least you're on the right side <clears throat> sorry the privilege access part so really and uh, gaining uh, or uh, giving secure access to, to your server infrastructure or your critical application and provision your users just in time and uh, it's it's all about yeah least privilege for everything and all this comes together with our Okta integration network and uh, our Okta Converge platform where you really can connect everything and put on top, I would say, the uh, 
the identity security uh, posture. Okay, next slide. Uh, when it comes to the demo I prepared, I would say some, some light use cases. I know we are short on time, so um, I will cover them very briefly. So I would demonstrate uh, you in a in a second how we can secure the first vulnerable touch point. So your device login, doesn't matter if it's Windows <clears throat> or if it's macOS. My demo will be based on Windows, but our Okta device access solution also covers uh, uh your your mac os device fleet then i will hover over to the octa end user dashboard so so called your one stop shop where you have all the application in one place logging into into the morning everything what you need uh, uh in place for work logging in, in a secure way with octa adaptive multi-factor authentication where you really will see that we are improving not only security but also user experience uh, then I will hover over very basic to showcase you the zero trust infrastructure access with our uh, pump solution called Octa Privilege Access. So logging in into a Windows server in a very secure way, just in time with user being provisioned in the background. And last but not least, I will very briefly show you, I would say, how all this magic stuff is looking like behind the scenes. So the magic Octa admin dashboard and yeah i hope you enjoy it and irina let me just share my screen now uh yeah sure i believe you can do it you have the right so please check okay i will share now we will do the entire screen okay so as mentioned, I would say we will cover, I would say, the uh, the secure the first vulnerable touch point with of the device access. At first, you see here that I have here a Windows, a Windows 11 device, and that is configured with Okta desktop MFA um, called Okta device access. And so you see here that I have here a magic sign in button. And when I press the sign in button, no password is really needed. What I'm getting here is, I would say, the uh, push notification to my phone where I just need to submit it. And I'm getting, I would say, redirected and locked in to my device in a secure way without prompting a password. It means that the device is connecting with our backend infrastructure, uh, Okta, with a desktop MFA app. And we can provide, I would say, here really a seamless, uh, a seamless secure authentication to the first vulnerable touch point. As mentioned, this is also possible with, with macOS, uh, maybe not a, I would say, real passwordless experience because there are some uh, Apple limitations and I would say um, configurations that need to be in place from Apple side, like, like Firewall, but I would say gaining access uh, on a Windows device with Okta in a secure passwordless um, way with biometrics enabled. This is what, what we can achieve. And this is uh, what is able, um, what we are able to configure on the Okta device uh, dashboard. Next demo, I will hover over to the Okta uh, end user dashboard. So as you see here in the browser, I have an, a customized Okta uh, SaaS tenant. Uh, you can, I would say, highly customize it based on your uh, on on your needs. You see here, I have a fancy logo. I have a nice uh, background picture, so you can brand it based on your needs. Uh, you can, I would say, configure configure different uh, brands. So if you, I would say, a kind of um, different um, subsidiaries in your companies, you can configure different brands. And let me just showcase you how we are able to, I would say, log in in a secure password and phishing resistant way to your one-stop shop, the Okta um, admin dashboard. This is possible with our Okta FastPass solution. If I press here, I'm getting immediately redirected and based on the authentication policies that I've configured in the background, my admin told me, hey, Akadius, you need to put in your finger, so your phishing resistant factor, to get, to get access, I would say, to your Okta dashboard. And this is what is so called our one stop shop. You see here that my administrator has already provisioned and pre configured me 
a lot of application that I would say uh, need to have for my for my daily work. You see here, I have a Microsoft Office 365 configured. As there's uh, critical data and company data, um, there's additional security policy on top that I need to, um, where I need to do again an MFA. I would say there's there's no need to have it in place, but our authentication policies are so flexible that we, you can decide, hey, how often the user needs to get prompted for MFA, which factor do we want to use here? Yeah? But in best case, for sure, as we all know, that basic MFA is not secure anymore in nowadays. It's all about phishing resistant authenticators in the future. You see also that I have another another bubbles and another applications configured. I also have a, a, a kind of Okta website application. So it's just a bookmark application that redirects you to our homepage. You see here that no MFA prompt and uh, no, no no other factors we have been asked for because it's it's just a bookmark, so not a real danger and uh, no really need to put MFA on top. So you see here that we are very flexible. What is working, I would say, with uh, with the Microsoft side and all other topics like, uh, like Salesforce that I already have in place, also here mission critical data. So you see here uh, the multi-factor and adaptive multi-factor authentication as well. But I also have, I would say, a kind of, hey, adaptive secure app on my dashboard that the admin assigned to me. So I'm just curious and want to see what the applications look like. So try to try to access it. The standard process running, but hey, telling me you don't have permission to perform the requested action. So very interesting. And so let's briefly, I would say, jump in to behind the scenes, the means the Okta admin dashboard. You see here that the user that I initially logged in uh, has based on our role based access model advance or additional rights to perform, I would say, also admin, admin tasks. So uh, the good thing is everything is one place. Everything is uh, within Okta. So I just have based on the role based access model, the admin button. So I open it up. Uh, no factor, I would say. Is uh, is uh, uh, oh I'm not asked for any factors because the authentication policy uh, was already met, so I already logged in with a phishing resistant authenticator. And you see here a uh, very very big big dashboard, big big overview. So you see here an overview with users groups. You see here a lot of tasks, and you also see I would say a kind of risk assessment that uh, we are doing live with our applications and with our with our identities so i will focus i would say on the on the on the application part so on the on the left side you see within the applications applications menu uh my pre-configured and already assigned application and the uh, all all the connectors and the magic is happening i would say in our octa integration network if you just browse in you see here that we nearly have 7,900 built-in connectors application that makes, I would say, it for the admins and for the users so easy to provide the users really the application they need and also the functionalities to ease your work. So we are not talking about MFA and SSO. We are also talking about lifecycle management. So uh, it would definitely take longer to deep dive into this lifecycle management part, but I want to just give you a brief overview, I would say, um, how powerful our so-called Okta integration network really is. But let, I would say, just concentrate for a minute on this crazy adaptive secure app. So I will navigate to applications, um, we'll open up the adaptive secure app, and each application, I would say, have a kind of view log sections, as we, as, uh, as we already mentioned. It's 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 visible, so we have a very powerful reporting the, where you can review everything, extract. So, and if we now navigate to the view log section on the application, you see here that hey, Arcadius, so it's me, tried really access this magic secure application uh, uh, and got an access denied. So, we with our powerful reporting engine, and when we are expanding it, give you really great insights why. I would say um, the access was denied. And 
we mentioned at the beginning that we are integrating with a lot of security vendors and uh, strong partners. And in this example, we have a massive, powerful and amazing integration with, uh, with CrowdStrike. And based on the um, risk signals, we can put on top security policies if the user or if the device is not fulfilling, I would say, special special parameters. So the risk score uh, that he or she need to have in place, we are, I would say, not allowing um, access to the application. So you see here that uh, it's it's visible, it's all within, within Okta, and I would say, if you have additional questions, reach out to CloudFresh, reach out to us. Uh, we are happy to give you more insights. Last but not least, um, just to showcase you the zero trust infrastructure access to uh, to your to your server means that uh, I will showcase you with our Okta Privilege Access Management solution how easy it is to secure your I would say infrastructure with uh, with a zero trust strategy. So I have a so called a zero trust uh, client installed, so the Okta Privilege Access uh, client. When I'm now logged in to my environment, I'm getting immediately redirected um, to my Okta infrastructure. I'm logging in with uh, with my user, so-called Alex Anderson. Again, no password, a strong factor to get access uh, to the Okta privilege access management. Um, I'm getting here, I would say, a credential request that I need to approve. Yes, it's me. So. Uh, this is Alex Mac that I'm currently trying to log in and working on. I'm improving it. And after a successful login, my, I would say, server infrastructure administrator already provided me access to a yeah, wide range of, of servers. So I have a kind of Linux um, server and also a Windows server. So now I would say in an old way, we know we know the issue that Logging into a Windows server as an administrator and open up the local user management, you really see a massive amount of uh, accounts maybe that are not uh, that are not within your company. Um, this is uh, this is definitely in, this was definitely an issue in the past, and we from the Okta Privilege Access Management can solve it because while trying to access my called OPA Windows Target Server, I'm getting prompted and asked, "Hey." which account or which role do you want to, to use to log into the server? I will just log in with Alex Anderson via a plain RDP session. So you see here that a more uh, 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 a, a lot more is possible, like we can create approvals with, uh, with, uh, with our governance part, and we also can do MFA, I would say, with session recording. So. I would like to log in with an app admin to my Windows device. I'm getting redirected because I will gain access to a server with admin rights. I need to prompt in for phishing resistant um, factor. And here you see the splash screen as I'm running on a Mac. The Mac RDP tool, I would say, is popping up. I'm getting immediately instant access to to my to my server in the backend means the identity is automatically um, created and provisioned from Okta to the server. And when I now log off of the server, the identity will be removed uh, from this server. And I would say this is all about Okta privilege access uh, management and how I would say this plays a great role in the zero trust architecture and your zero trust strategy and yes this concludes the the end of my short crisp and fast demos and as mentioned if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to us thank you thank you thank you arkadiusz um i will resume the screen share and the presentation uh, yeah, I believe uh, that's uh, already um, one hour, but uh, thank you everyone who is still with us. Uh, if you need to run, um, you can run. We will uh, send you the recording. We just have a Q&A session left and our services presentation. So um, thanks everyone uh, who uh, needs to run.
Uh, so I can cover uh, the Okta uh, professional service packages by Cloudfresh. So uh, we uh, can help not just implement Okta, we can provide our already uh, packaged services. Uh, it's an uh, Okta SSO uh, that provide uh, admin training and et cetera services and Okta uh, a week life cycle setup package but uh here uh, just packages for company who already know uh, have uh, many um consulting times they need and what services they need and also of course we provide uh, individual uh, consulting for uh, all uh, companies And uh, I'm pretty sure you're asking why Cloudfresh. Uh, firstly, it's a uh, proof uh, of concept. Uh, we gain a complete hands-on experience as we relate existing process and customize Okta solution to meet your specific business needs and uh, meet the zero trust and regulatory. And for sure, it's a special discount from our side. It says the wide range of discounts available for new and regular customers through Okta Activate Partner. Uh, thanks, Yulia. Uh, the Q&A session, uh, if anyone wants to ask question uh, in live, uh, just uh, raise a hand or, or drop a message to the chat. Uh, we had a couple of questions when Arkadiusz uh, was presenting. So the first one is about the inside threads, how uh, co a company can uh, protect against inside threats. <laughs> I believe someone is already following uh, Never Trust Anyone <laughs> Verify uh, framework. Yeah, so I would say we from Okta side have, I would say, different, different solutions, different options, I would say, to secure the company data and to secure the, the identity. So from, I would say, we are doing, I would say, a pre, pre hours uh, check with our uh, Okta threat insight. And what we also saw is in best case, we should or we have to use, I would say, phishing resistant authenticators because uh, basic MFA with a using a password and maybe a fancy OTP is really not enough anymore. So there are a lot of easy tools where bad actors, I would say, can spin up, I would say, and send you malicious link or uh, um, crazy, crazy spam emails where you just click on it and I would say provide your credentials and with, I would say, Okta, uh, with Okta Fastpass and the strong phishing resistant authenticator, we are able, I would say, to solve this issue. And uh, last but not least, uh, we also introduced and released um, a new flagship product called, I would say, Okta Identity Threat Protection. So with this, we're also covering the post authentication, I would say, uh, issues if someone will grab your kind of IDX token or try to uh, try to steal your credentials. So we at Okta really have a wide range of options and products really to, to help you uh, covering um, the complete life cycle or the complete lifetime of an of an octa session so from the login uh, so the pre-login during the login and now also with our new product called octa identity Swap protection in the post authentication world mm, great thanks so much um Okay, yeah, Julia. And also, I wanted uh, to add that uh, Okta has an uh, reports and logs so of uh, when something like that just happened. It's um, Okta provides a better way to just investigate the situation, and you can find any logs and all information by users' activity and application usage uh, in Okta. So it's, it's uh, can be uh, help a lot. And also, we uh, want to remember about assess the sensitive data uh, has to be. Uh, assess provided just for uh, employees who need the data for work. Thanks uh, for the contribution. Um, and the second question um, is um, about saving money um, by implementing Okta Zero Trust model uh, in the long run. Um, I think this one uh, Arkadiusz can also cover, but yeah, Yulia, you can complement. 
Yeah, you if you want, you can cover this. Um, yeah, from what you can cover. <laughs> Yeah, so so first of all, uh, yeah, we all know that uh, I would say uh, it's it's for sure a lot of people are asking out, hey, it's about saving money, but it's also about, I would say, saving your corporate infrastructure and saving your data. So as mentioned, uh, it's really important uh, to remember and to repeat that you need to build up a real strategy for implementing uh, cybersecurity in 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 a business world so and then you will i would say see that um you will uh, at the end of the day save save money uh because uh, we all know this and we all read this in newspapers on social media how how often really companies getting compromised uh, credentials uh getting uh, uh i would say breached etc so it's it's about doing nothing and i would say getting breach versus i would say getting a strong partner uh, like cloudfresh taking the best in class solution with okta and start i would say designing your your trust infrastructure or your zero trust strategy today and now thank you thank you so much for covering it um and we just left one important part uh, is um uh, to choose uh, a winner of the branded gifts, um, if a person, if this person um, isn't with us anymore, I will contact, uh, contact him or her via email. Um, I think Arkadiusz, you can choose because you have, uh, um, or you can both uh, just shoot the question um, which you think uh, uh, was the most interesting to you. Um, yeah, so go on. Julia, do you want to pick someone? Uh, no, I did it on provision webinar. <laughs> okay, so let's take the how does Okta help? I would say against threats from people inside our company. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Roman. Uh, we will contact you after the webinar. Um, just uh, a quick reminder about the offer. Um, uh, I will also um, send a link to it in the follow-up email uh, along with the recording link and um, link to the slides. Thank you so much for being here. Sorry uh, for um, keeping you uh, a little bit longer. Uh, have a nice day, Arkadius, Julia. Thank you so much uh, for contribution and the speeches. Um, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. 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 Bye.